So, uh, you know, obviously this is your senior season at Ashland, NCAA Division II team. Um, you guys were actually out in South Dakota, weren't you? Yeah, we were there, and we had already had two practices. Some of us had three. Wow. It depends who had pride to cut weight, right? Yeah, I had two, and I had just done my last weight cut. I was right on weight, basically, when I got the news. Okay. So you qualified two years ago and didn't qualify last year for nationals, right? Yeah, I qualified my freshman year also. Oh, so you qual- you're a three-time qualifier. Yeah. So this is the fifth year, and... um. First thing, what was going through your head? What what did your coaches say to you after you guys after you found out? Well, it was kind of weird because I came to my coach's room to pick up the wristbands because we had been limited to just family. So I picked up. I was there to pick up my wristbands because he just got back from the coaches' meeting, and I was like, "Well, that's a good sign. I see wristbands. That means that we're probably going tomorrow." He was like, "Well, don't get crazy yet because we still don't know." And I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden our athletic trainer walks in the room and she says, you need to check your email right now. And that was the cancellation email. And then we got a call from the NCAA and she was upset because she knows all of us. And that was just a rough deal. Yeah. That's basically how I found out. We had just gotten done with a workout at 10 AM. I think this was around, I want to say like three. Okay. So next morning, 10 AM whistle. Would it have been next morning, 10 AM whistle? I think, yeah, it was 11 a.m. It was 9 a.m. weigh-ins, 11 a.m. whistle. Yep, okay. So we're, we're under 24 hours from the tournament start. Oh, yeah. It was ready to go. <laughs> yeah, man, that's so wild. And you guys are a two-day NCAA championship, right? Yep, two days, Friday, there's Saturday. D1's a three-day. and I haven't figured this out yet. Is D3 a three-day? I don't know. I, I, I think it was at one point. I'm not 100% sure that it is i gotta find but, a d3 guy to talk to because i think it's a three day but i gotta I'm, I'm just ignorant i don't know i gotta find that out yeah because, i mean either either way they they were all within 24 hours of starting or they were they were yeah right, i think i think they, they were, were right their first go. whistle dude i want to yeah. say that but i mean i've been wrong before but you know ashland ashland's a great college private school in ohio um how many students do you guys yeah. have at ashland oh that's a good question. I couldn't. I don't even know. Maybe two or three thousand. It's got to be. It's got to be in the low thousands. I would say. Okay. Because I mean, in my classroom, I would say that there the max I've ever had was like forty people in a classroom. Okay. It's so, usually yeah, average it, about it's, ten it's to a twelve. Small private school then. So, um, and your coach came from Colorado School of Mines, right? Yep. He's a pretty good guy. I asked him why he did that. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 a great guy and. He's told me so much about Colorado. I didn't know coming out that I that how beautiful Colorado was. Are like because I'm just an ig- ignorant yeah, young high school crazy. kid. I've never been. It's crazy. You gotta go. Yeah, I gotta go. I yeah. gotta go. Hopefully, they, they I can actually go have soon. a. Uh, they had an assistant coaching opening at uh, Colorado School of Mines. So maybe look into that. Uh, what, what is your major, by the way, Chandler? Sport management. Sport management with a coaching minor. Okay, so you, that's something where it would be right up your alley, right? Yeah, uh, actually, next year, in, unless I get a sixth year, which I don't see really happening, but I got hired as an assistant for next year to be at Ashland and oh, finish up awesome, my master's. Man. So you're going to be back at Ashland one way or another. One way or another. So, so if I get a sixth year, that's great. We'll figure it out. We'll do whatever wrestling we have to do. If I don't, I'll just go jump right into coaching. Um, you went to Bloom Carroll High School, right? Is that it? Yeah, and I did my senior year at Pickerington North. So you're at Pickerington North. Okay. So uh, is Laney from Pickerington North? Yeah, he graduated from – we both transferred there our senior year. Okay. So you and Laney – and how many times did you place in the state tournament? Three. I didn't qualify my senior year. Didn't qualify because Division I. What's Bloom Carroll? They they were D3 my freshman year, D3 my sophomore year, and D2 my – junior year what were your placements and so you wrestled you wrestled potentially in all three division state tournaments right like you wrestled in the qualification process for division one right yeah uh so i basically i wrestled in all three divisions yeah i guess (laughs) no you did (laughs) you did (laughs) right yeah yeah because i mean i wrestled if i would have made it to the state tournament my senior year i would have 
I would have been a qualifier in all three divisions. Okay. What did you place as a freshman, sophomore, and junior? I got seventh all three years, you were believe seventh it or not. All three years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought you were sixth one year for some reason. No, it would have been nice to get up on the podium a little bit, but made me a better wrestler, I guess, in college. Drove me more. <laughs> okay. So here, here's the, the big thing I have with you, man. Um, you've had... You've had way more devastating stuff in your life happen um, than a tournament get canceled, right? Um, you know, and talking yeah, to you about, yeah. you know, you, you lost your brother. Um, how old was your brother when you lost him? Uh, he was 27. 27. And he was a state placer. And I like, was right around 21. 21. And he went he to was a Fairfield Union? Three times state placer. Fairfield yeah, Union? he went to Fairfield Union. It's right down the road from Carroll. Yeah. So he was a three time state placer at Fairfield Union. Tougher than tougher than nails. Um, you lose your brother, and what were the circumstances you lose your brother under? Well, uh, he died of an overdose. He thought he was taking heroin, and he, it was actually straight fentanyl, and just died right there. I mean, I wasn't there. I I was at school, and my dad called me. And I I really I didn't see the scene. I have they, we did a closed casket. I have nothing really. I know I don't know what he looked like, but I've heard bad things for my sister about how he looked. It was pretty messed up. And that's who you grew up, you know, looking up to. He's a three-time state placer. You're a three-time state placer, but you're trying to model yourself after your brother, right? Yeah, uh, for sure. Tried to model myself after him. I mean, I shared a room with him. We had bunk beds as kids. We had to share the same bed plenty of times, too, on road trips. Uh, he taught me quite a bit, quite a bit. All the time, we were always going to the same club practices in Columbus. We always went to Burnett's together where we would see you. And you would drive us into the ground in the uh, run in the apple orchard. <laughs> Pie crafts, right? Yeah, the yeah, old apple man, orchard. Guys, I would never, uh, I'll never miss that apple <laughs> orchard, I don't think. <laughs> the Steamer brothers hate me pretty bad for that, too. Um, yeah. That whole thing, yeah, man, it, it's crazy. And I remember your brother from camp, man. It's just so wild. But So you have a much greater perspective on this. And and I'm not trying to downplay, you know, how guys have put their lives into it, but you know, you you have suffered so much of a greater loss, and and you you've had a greater understanding that life's really not fair. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I had my brother stripped from me, and we had a lot of a lot of days left together. Uh, so, like, when I look at this tournament being canceled from me, like, I'm devastated. Obviously, like, I had one more chance to wrestle. I don't get that last chance to know, like, when I'm going into that match, like, this could be my last match. I don't really get that. But uh, it's – when you look at it as a general thing, it's to protect our health, all kinds of other stuff. There's a lot of more things that, that go into it. But when you look at losing your brother compared to losing a tournament when you've got the rest of your life ahead of you still, it, it really is kind of downplay for sure. <laughs> It's just no comparison like, for me. Oh, no no comparison. That's what I meant. Like, not downplay, but definitely no comparison. Like, the, the devastation I felt when I lost my brother was huge. Like, this was minor compared to that, for sure. You know, and you, like, you know, obviously, I was very upset. Yeah. And, you, you know, you <laughs> move forward from that, and there's probably stuff where you got to go talk to people and talk to your family members and help them out with it. You know, how, how do you move forward yeah. from this? And, and do you feel like... I'm prepared for this. I'm prepared. I've already been through a much worse thing. I'm I'm so very pre prepared for this. Yeah, that's one of the things with uh I have a really great mom. She's uh she's she's prepared for anything just cuz like with her work, she's like she's always worked with people like where she's always preparing for the worst. So like I've learned really well with like I can it's like I have a bad thing, I guess. I am prepared for the worst to happen at all moments. Like I can take it and I can think about it and I can process it and I can not overreact, I guess you could say. You know, in that situation, you were at Ashland when they called you with the news for that, right? Yeah, I was in my dorm room, yeah. So you're I just got back from a practice. So, you you know, it's like one of those things where you know right where you were, right? Yeah, I remember exactly where I was when my dad told me. Yeah, no comparison to going to get the coaching wristbands and, hey, this is canceled. I, you really can't compare. Yeah, them. I'll never forget that either probably, but it's definitely no comparison. It's, it, 
I really never thought about it till we like are starting the interview. Like, yeah, this is nothing compared to that, but for sure. Colin Moore talked about perspective and I think this is the perspective he's talking about. You have a very different <laughs> point of view of this compared to everybody else. Yeah, I, I definitely have a different point of view. I want, I want to, I wanted to wrestle for sure. It's a, uh, it's, it really sucks. I'm, I'm pretty upset about not being able to wrestle my final matches, but I'm never going to be an All-American. But when you think of it as, like, you were you had that taken away from you, there's probably somebody else out there, probably on the same day, that they lost a loved one from this coronavirus. Now, I don't know anybody personally, but I'm sure it happened somewhere. It's ramping up in Ohio, man. We are really ramping it up. Um, I'm probably you know, potentially on the cusp of missing an entire school year, um, you know, cause I teach, um, what has Ashland right. done? Or are you guys done there at Ashland? Uh, well in Ashland right now, we are closed until the 30th. I'm of pretty March. sure they've closed of March? The, the March 30th. March 30th. Okay. Yeah. I think we're closed until the 30th. I'm guessing we're probably going to close for the rest of the semester, just like Kent and Ohio State have done. I don't Akron, know who else has done that. I think Ohio U. I think a lot of them are. I'm really sure great. we're next. Yeah. I'm sure we're just holding out a little while. Um, and I'm here, and you know, I heard Mike DeWine talk today on CNN. Um, he's our governor. Um, yeah, I'm here. He closed, maybe potentially. He closed the bars and everything else. Bars, today. yeah, bars. You can only go uh, restaurants, bars are only takeout. And um, yeah, other thing is. Uh, I'm hearing uh, interstate travel, borders of, of states potentially. I'm hearing oh, that's really? next. And we're on a trajectory wow. towards like what Italy's at right now. Oh, shoot. Yeah. That's crazy because I'm going to see my fiance in Indiana tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might want to go tomorrow or even tonight after we're, uh, we're done here. Uh, when did you get engaged? Yeah. Uh, I got engaged two years ago. Uh, I got engaged in August right before last wrestling season. You've been engaged for two years, dude? Yeah. <laughs> I had to grab married? it before anybody else could. <laughs> when, you, when, you get, when you get married? Well, we made a deal because I, I proposed, like it wasn't like a premature thing. Like I, I knew I wanted to get married. I was down for whatever she wanted to do, but she wants me to finish all of my schooling. So we're just going to wait till then, and we're trying to save up so our parents don't have to pay any money. Dude, I want you to be one of my kids, man. You <laughs> You like get it. You really get it. Um, you know, my kids are two and four. Maybe they'll get it too. But um, yeah, you got time. I got time. <laughs> you got plenty time, of time. Time is not on my side, but it is. It is, but it is. Yeah. Um, what did mom and dad say to you? What What are family members saying to you after something tough like this happens? My mom, honestly, like, cause she knows a lot of loss, cause she's dealt with a lot in her life. Uh, she just gave me a hug, and she's. Cause I was crying. I was upset. She just said, this sucks. And I know it sucks. And she's like, this, it's a, it's going to be okay. That's big. That's all they could really say. My dad, you know, he's been in wrestling. He was the reason my family started wrestling. He's been, he told me that this would have, this was his 39th year of wrestling. So he was just like, they were, they're just proud of me. That's about it. I mean, there was nothing they really could say that would change anything, I guess. They're, they're just really proud of me, and I'm really thankful for them and my coaches, all of them, for reaching out to me. All right. Um, let's just let's just go. Let's go alternative reality here. Let's just say they grant the sixth year. <laughs> they grant the sixth year. Are you jumping at it? Yeah, I, I think I would have to do like a, a pitch count. Because, you know, I get I got pretty banged up over the past two years. I definitely have to do a pitch count, I feel like. Uh, but other than that, I would definitely jump at it because I, I would really like to have my chance to be a national champ or an All-American. That's what I like to hear. Um, the Burnettes, do they make them better than the Burnett, the Burnett brothers? No, nobody's better than Bernie or Scotty. Nobody's better than those guys. Best people around. Is there I'd a, do anything for those dudes. Work for free if I had to. Funnier set of brothers. Ooh, a funnier set of brothers. I I went to high school with some twins that were pretty funny, but I don't think that they're funnier than because because Bernie's like Bernie's the relaxed guy, and then you got Scotty who's like the super energy charged guy, and they just clash, and it's perfect. <laughs> it's so awesome. Oh man, 
And, you know, man, I've got to watch you grow up. And that, that's the best thing about this. Like, I talk to you guys. You know, I got to watch you as a kid, and you've always just been so respectful. I remember your dad came with the allergic reaction to camp to pick you guys up. He had an allergic reaction, or His I did? lip was, like, huge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shellfish yeah, or something. Yeah, I do remember what was that. it? <laughs> I do remember when that happened. That was crazy. I was like, dude, yeah. are you okay? Oh, yeah, just an allergic reaction. You remember that? Yeah, I, I not really well, but I do remember his lip being huge. Huge. I, okay. I don't remember what it was from though. It was an allergic reaction. Yeah. I mean, you didn't get yeah, punched but in the I don't lip. remember it from what. Yeah. yeah, you didn't get punched in the lip. You got to ask him. Um, what do you think the biggest thing you're yeah. going to take from all this wrestling you've done, this experience, the family? What do you think the biggest thing you you've wanted to get out of this is? You, you know, you're not. Most likely, we're probably not going to see you get another chance at this. What's the greatest thing you've taken from this? What's the greatest memory, lesson, uh, character, whatever it's done for you, Chandler? What's the, what do you think the greatest thing is? I would say it's just it's built me as a person. That's like the reason I am the person I am. Like you say, I'm a very respectful person. It's all because of wrestling, and that's why like I thank wrestling so much because it's shaped me as a person. It's shaped me as a human being. Like how I act around people, how I address certain situations, how I attack life. That like, That's probably the best thing is just the sport, what it's given me and how my parents have pushed me through it. Because there was times when I, it got tough and I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> when I see you and I can just talk to you, man, I always try and take the time. And I don't know if you've ever noticed that I'm not – I'm always super busy, man. When you see me, if you, if you you are. You got a lot going on. You got defense soap. You got your own job. You got barbarian apparel. You're doing film for all these different stuff. That's why I love it, and I, I always try to reach out and help you out if I can. Yeah, but like when I see you, I'm always like, dude, I gotta go talk to that guy. I gotta. I always feel like <laughs> I, it's like one of these awesome obligations to have when you see great people like you. It's like, dude, that guy's the man. I, I gotta. I gotta go talk to him. Hopefully you've always felt yeah. like you've felt that. Hopefully you've always felt like, ah, he's snubbing me or not. I hope, hopefully you've never no, felt that. He's not no, snubbing I me. Because you always at least try to say hi because I know you're busy. Dude, it's like it's you were, a whirlwind, man. You, you were actually at Michigan State. It was my first ever college tournament. And right before my first college match, you came up to me and you were like, you are making me feel old. I can't believe you are in college now. Oh, <laughs> I remember when you were a munchkin is what you told me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I do, man. What great memories, you know, having you and your brother at camp and your dad showing yeah. up with his big fat lip and <laughs> running you guys through the orchard. And you were at both facilities when we worked at Burnett's. You were at the new one, and that's where you work yeah. now. Will you continue to work for those guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. I will. As long as I am around, I will try to work for Coach Burnett. I want to give back to him more than anybody. He's done too much for this sport. He's done too much for me to not do it. Dude, I remember, now I remember, like, seeing you at the freaking, because Kramer was one of your teammates then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. Time flies, man. I, it just blows my yeah. mind, dude. Um, What do you think, uh, you know, if there's something that you're most proud of or you want your brother to be most proud of, what, what do you think it's your most proud moment in the sport of wrestling is? I would probably say my most proud moment is probably when I qualified for nationals my freshman year. I had, I actually, because I'm sure you know about this, I got the true fourth match when I was a freshman. Okay. And I beat the kid. He was ranked like top five in the country, and he got fourth in our region. And then I got the true fourth match. And he hadn't and beat I beat you beat previously him in the tournament. That's how the true fourth, true. True second, that's how the yeah. true six, true eight, there's all, all, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I got the true fourth match, and I won. Who'd you beat? And that's probably... Who'd you beat? I beat a kid named Derek Nelson. He's actually the head coach at Coker now. Are you serious? Uh, beat Derek Nelson. He was a transfer from University of Pittsburgh, and I beat him. I think I almost majored him. I held him on his back for the entire third period. What, what school was he from? Coker. He what? He was from Coker. Now he's the head coach at Coker. Yep. Okay. Dude, how they do you guys region? I I really dislike it. It's like they put all the lower yeah. teams together. I don't understand it. 
Yeah, there's so many good teams in certain regions, and it it's lopsided in certain ways. But you can look at it, and you know they want equal representation from all the different schools of the area. So I understand what the NCAA is thinking with money wise. Yeah, I get it. You got to spread it out. Yeah, got to be equitable. But yeah, it's really not equi- equitable to the best programs. If only they did that for Division One too. Right. I mean, think of how many Big Ten guys wouldn't get in because Big Ten's like. Would, All these yes. schools, right? Yeah, here. it would be, it would be egregious. Let's just put it that way. Oh yeah. So, all right, man. What's next for you? Give me your, give me your next. I, we don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You don't know what you're gonna do. We, nobody knows what we're gonna do. What do you, what do well, you see right the next now, three months of our lives? <laughs> I, I, I was confused on what I was gonna do for the last few days, but as of right now, I'm just gonna focus on my masters, getting school done, and. I currently do an internship for my coach, which basically is going to lead right in to my coaching position. So I'm already on staff. It doesn't sound staff, like basically. you're going to be doing much for your internship. Yeah, it's, I'm doing all online. We're trying to set up a recruiting brochure, and then we're going to try to set up some sort of a prospect camp. So that's my job, I guess. Okay. You've got to work let me know on that. If I can help out, I'll try and help out. If, yeah. If it makes sense and I can get my partners to, to pitch in and help out, I'm, that's something I'm trying to get into now. More and more, if I can. Help All right, for sure. I'll, I'll let out. you know. So, um, you got. First off, I'm gonna. We're gonna cut the interview here soon. Um, is there anything else you got to me before we're done here tonight? Not really. I mean, I just want to thank my coaches and my parents in wrestling for what it's done for me, and thank you, Zeb, for everything you do for wrestling because of people like you that grow. Our sport's been growing over the past. I don't know. I've seen growth in the past five years. It's people, media, and guys are getting the word out there about wrestling that grow this sport, and I love it. Being a D2 guy, do you ever feel like some media slights you guys and that maybe it's not, you know, I don't know if it's probably, probably not personal, but do you guys ever feel, do you ever feel that when you go to a D2? Like sometimes you guys don't get it, like obviously the higher level D1 guys get it, right? Yeah, I, I feel that way sometimes, but like I wouldn't say it like makes me angry. It's just I understand that those big schools make the big money, and that's why they're the big schools. But D2, I mean, we've got some of the best competitors, bar none. I mean, we've, we've had Olympians. We've had I don't know, the UFC everything. champ. When the UFC with- champ right now at 170 pounds, Usman. <coughs> you know, he won, yeah. he won the NCAAs for UNK. Did you know that? He won it for Kearney. Yeah, I, I, I remember somebody telling me about that. I didn't know until he had already won UFC, but somebody did tell me he was a D2 guy. I think Gar- Garbrandt went to Newberry for a cup of coffee at least. Yeah, he was there for a little while. Yeah, I, I mean, think one of the one of the Garbrandts actually went to Ashland too. Yeah, that was uh, one of the Zach, Garbrandt brothers. Zach, Zach. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, dude, it's just insane how tough some of the guys are. I mean, it's the, you know. Think about D- how many dudes don't survive in D2 yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, in. And you look at it, I was talking to Coach John Hanji from uh, Ryder, and he was like, I was talking about, you know, Stipe. Stipe qualified for the Nationals, the NCAAs, for Cleveland State. Yeah. And um, NCAA wrestling, I don't care what your level is, it's the breeding ground for the toughest guys on the planet. Yeah, I would I would say so. I mean, I never no, really thought no, about that. No, it's not really but... a debate. Look at who the champions yeah. have been. And look at what at what level they made it at. Whether it was uh, D two, D one, D two. Uh, I think John John Jones is the JUCO national champ. I mean, come on. I, I don't know. Oh, I didn't even know that. I, I, I didn't don't know, know that. what to That's... say. So wild stuff. Wow. So, hey, stick around after the call. I'm gonna cut the I'm gonna cut the live video off. But man, I just appreciate you. I appreciate seeing you. Love seeing you since you've been a little ankle biter, and I've tortured you guys <laughs> uh, doing sprints up and down in the uh, Piecrafts Apple Orchard at Burnett's training camp. Awesome camp, great memories. Awesome, I, dude. I love it when you bring stuff up like the Michigan State Open and what I said. Yeah, I'm glad. I just always want to make sure I'm positive to someone like you, and po- I mean positive to everybody. Even if someone's a jerk, yeah. I still want to be positive to them. But thanks for thanks for sharing your story, man. I, I love it. Um, hang around here. I'm going to talk to you for a little bit off uh, after we're cutting the interview here. Chandler, thank you for the time. Good luck, buddy. Whether it's coaching, whether thanks, it's another man. year competition, I appreciate you. Thanks for the time. I'm going to. Cut this off, and we'll talk a little bit off camera. All right, buddy? All righty. Thanks, bud.